All right, fighthype.com here with the former two division champ Jesse Vargas, fresh off a knockout in the sixth round on Humberto Soto. Uh, Jesse, you said before the fight you wanted to knock this guy out, send him into retirement. You think that's what happened tonight? You know what? I wanted to win convincingly. I wanted to let the fans know that, that I'm back and better than ever at 154 pounds. I'm stronger, and I, I did say before that I felt stronger, faster, more explosive, and you saw it today. We set it all up. We set the combinations up. We took our time, and we took them out when, as soon as we saw the opportunity for it. Did you take your time, though, Jess? Because it seemed like this guy had you exchanging from the opening bell. Yeah, I mean, he wanted to confuse me. He wanted to steal rounds towards the end. And again, he's a very experienced, savvy uh, veteran. You know, I give him credit. I, he's, he's faster than I expected, honestly, because for him to be, you know, a veteran, and to have that speed, I said, okay, he's very well prepared. It's okay. I'm going to pick him apart. I'm going to touch him to the body, touch him up top, touch him with fast punches, strong punches, and uh, break him down. But the knockout came in the sixth, seventh round, and we were able to take him out. Uh, Freddie told me, don't be so nice in there. You got to get mean. That's exactly what I did. I've never forgotten those words. The minute that I saw the opening, I took him out. What exactly was better or, or different tonight, uh, being that it was with Freddie Roach, and it was the first fight at junior middleweight? The, the, not only him, Freddie Rose, Justin Fortune, my physical trainer, did an amazing job. But I'd say the power that I possessed was much different. The balance, the speed, uh, the rhythm that I had, I just felt comfortable in there. I mean, as you said, Zorita comes to fight. You know what I mean? That's the reason why he defeated Brandon Rios in his last fight. He, he, he said it in the press conference, I fight with my heart and I'll fight to the end. You know, I hope that you enjoy the fight. Those were his words. I knew that he was going to fight with his heart. He always does. So I take my hat off to him, and, and I, I pay him nothing but respect. He fought with his heart. He fought all the way to the end. He wasn't giving up. And um, I was able to capitalize on, on just one big punch that I landed, and I didn't stop. I saw that after you knocked him out. You went to the corner. Uh, what was that moment like, you know, be, being that this was a guy you probably watched a uh, fight before you even became a professional. So what was that moment like when you went over to him after the knockout? I admired him. I told him that I, he has nothing but my respect. Uh, thank you for the, I thank him for the opportunity because uh, he is a two division world champion who a lot of fighters admire him. You know because he in Mexico he's huge. You know he, he had a lot of success and uh, he, he made a lot of his fans proud for many many years. So uh, you know I, I have nothing but respect for him and I had to take him out. It was either me or him. And Freddie told me Jesse, you got to get mean. And um, that helped. I mean, I haven't forgot that, those words that he told me. It was your first knockout in a couple years. How did that feel, and how did you set it up? It looked like a nice one-two that got him out of there. It was a sneaky right hand. Uh, you know, I uh, first of all, I let him come in, and I and I counterpunched him with a right hand, and I hurt him, and then I capitalized, and I kept it coming. And I set the other one up right over the top and took him out. I knew he was hurt, so I, I, I didn't let him put off the gas. I knocked down the lerm and I made the mistake of being too nice and just cruising through it. I said, fuck that. That didn't happen in this time. I'm, if I, throw, if I, if I uh, put him down, I'm going to finish him. And I did. Now, Jesse, on to some big business at hand. Uh, is Jaime Munguia next? Do you think they'll give you that fight? Because he, he's a good young fighter, but he might be moving up. And, and why throw him in there with a 29-year-old former champion like yourself? Do you think you'll get the Jaime Munguia fight? I think so. I think he's a talented fighter. I think he's, he's brave. He's not scared of, of fighting anyone. So I, I think we can make that, high, that fight happen. I, I think that it would be a fight for the fans. You know, we would please them with it because it'd be a great one. You know, two Mexican warriors throwing it down. That's what it's about. And I think we can make it happen. Uh, their promoter have the promoter uh, came back to me and said, "Yeah, we can make that fight happen later this year." So a fight that can happen. Don't don't uh, don't doubt it. Is that your number one choice, Mungia? That one. We also have a. Uh, I honestly am interested in a Jared Hurd fight. You know, he has uh, he has the title as well. He's a talented fighter. I think we can mix in well in, in the ring. Um, anyone in the division, but I'll let my promoter, you know, uh, decide and, and my advisors and, and don't negotiate the rest. Did I hear Jared Hurd? Is that right? I really like that fight. I really like that fight. He's a talented fighter. I think that uh, that we would mix in well together. Well, both of them guys are come forward big junior middleweights how how would you beat Jaime Mugia and secondly how would you beat Jared Hurd with my experience my ring generalship uh, my speed my explosiveness that's how I beat him which one's more realistic for 2019 2019 this year well their promoter already 
uh, came back to me and, and said that we can make it by the end of this year. That's Jaime Mupia. So if, if they uh, come through with it, maybe that fight can happen next. Eddie Hearn really likes it. My advisors like it. So if, they, if everything is, if everyone is on board, I don't see why it won't happen. When you saw his fight with Dennis Hogan, did you think he won the fight, and did you see things you could exploit? I think it was a close fight. I think that uh, Hogan had a lot of experience, but I think that uh, Mojia won the fight, without a doubt. And um, do I see anything that I can, that, any weaknesses in this game? I do, I do, but uh, you know, uh, the thing about us, fight game we got to be ready for the best opponent possible because you never know how they come in in the next fight so uh, just like me I mean any mistakes that I made today I'll make sure to correct them in the next training camp and um, I'm just glad that they didn't stop the fight in the first round that we were able to go the full uh, the full fight you know when I knocked them on the seventh I didn't want them to stop the fight in the first I didn't want it to the cut because the cut you got the cut that we got in the first round you know unfortunately it's 12 stitches that it got that I got right there you know unfortunately but my fans don't deserve a first round stoppage because of a cut. You know, I wanted it, it to end in a tremendous fashion, and that's exactly what happened. And just lastly on the Mugia thing, would you take advantage of his defensive flaws? He, 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 would you take advantage of his defensive lapses and flaws? I would take advantage of each and every one of his flaws. Any mistake that he commits, I'd capitalize on it. And that's what would make me win. And lastly, Jesse, any chance of a Terrence Crawford fight? You're, you're like the one guy in boxing that could work with all the different promoters. So any chance Terrence Crawford and Jesse Vargas? Thankfully I am. I'm at, uh, I can work with anyone. Uh, um, but my promoter, Eddie Hearn, will be the one to negotiate any fight that, that uh, tell you what, whatever Eddie Hearn, my advisors put me in against, that's what we're going to fight. Uh, I'm not going back down to 147, though. Anyone that I'll be fighting will be at 154. I can't make 47. You know, this fight was at 51. I felt very comfortable. 54, I'm gaining a little more muscle. But I won't be fighting at 47 anymore, so that's out of the that's out of the question. Why do you think you're the rare guy who can do that though? Work with the different promoters, still have it be all good. My promoter is Eddie Hearn. Right, so right, right. Whoever he he and my advisors choose to choose to negotiate with for my next fight, and that's who we're going in against. But uh, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm I'm very thankful to Match from Boxing, the Zone, my advisors. They're all doing a tremendous job. Um, you know, I, I thank them for being on my side. We'll see you next week for Canelo Jacobs in Vegas, right? Of course. I'll be there reporting live for the zone. Uh, I hope that this, this cut is healed up by then. But uh, you know, I just we're gonna we're gonna be informing you on what's going down on the zone. Tune in. Also also Univision, you know, uh, post fight, pre fight, you know, uh, rituals, but the zone, tune in. Uh, Canelo versus Jacobs is gonna be a showdown. Hope to talk to you about that fight later on. Thanks, Jesse. Anytime, thank you.